standing by working all morning, I know, uh, reporting live on Facebook, among other places. Let's catch up with her. What's your take and what's the situation you're looking at right now, Kelsey? Dan, good morning. We're kind of going to get it going to give you a look at what the fire is doing currently, and I can tell you over the past 30 minutes to an hour, it's really evolved. It's kind of moved um, spots at the plant that we can see, and we've even heard several booms crashes, pops. I'm not going to say there were any more explosions, but we have heard some sounds coming from the plant and you can see that fire is still rolling very strong this morning and it even kind of changes. It'll go for, you know, 30 seconds or a minute where it will it will be brighter and more intense and lighting up the sky and then it'll die down just a little bit and we'll hear some rumbling or cracking or almost sounds like uh, something might be collapsing over there. Uh, but but we've just kind of seen it evolve here over the past 30 minutes to an hour. And like you uh, just heard from Judge Jeff Brannick a few moments ago, I wanted to again reiterate that uh, I see on the Groves Fire Department's Facebook page, they have issued a shelter in place, but we heard from Judge Brannick that he's recommending people go ahead and get out of the area, but they posted that they're, they have issued a shelter in place for the entire city of Groves due to this wind shift. And they say the plume is coming from unprocessed crude oil. So uh, Facebook this morning is becoming our friend because all the various agencies in this area are kind of using that to post some updates. And there is a command center in uh, Port Natchez this morning, but we haven't been able to get there. Their, uh, you know, law enforcement and emergency management officials are kind of uh, keeping us at bay. They're dealing with a lot right now. So unfortunately, we're all in the situation where we have more questions than answers, and we can only report what we're seeing, what we're hearing, what people are telling us. So uh, that's kind of the situation that we are seeing here. And I think we're going to move now to another location, that market basket area right. where Angel was several hours ago this morning that had some significant damage, but we just wanted to show you what the fire looked like right now. And we are at the ball fields uh, in Port Natchez is where we're getting our view right, from. Right off of Merriman. Can you move just a little bit to one side? I don't know which direction. I think it's to your right. I, and I only ask that because now, there you go. Uh, just to give people an idea of how widespread this is, uh, the fire. Uh, and, and the other, you were talking about exposure you know, and the idea that you get conflicting information. But I do want to share this. I, I did a little quick Google search uh, talking about exposure. And again, we're not sure exactly. Uh, the judge is saying, uh, Brannick is saying that perhaps there's some butadiene mixed into this. And what they're saying, Kelsey, and you probably want to be aware of this as well since you're out there, acute low exposures may cause irritation to the eyes, throat, nose, and lungs. Uh, and it says also acute high exposure may cause damage to the central nervous system or cause systems, uh, symptoms such as distorted blurred vision, vertigo, general tiredness, decreased blood pressure, headache, nausea, decreased pulse rate, and fainting. And again, that's acute high exposures, but for low exposures, uh, it's much less serious. Do uh, Kelsey, I, I know this is kind of a strange question, do you smell anything? I mean, because a lot of times, you know, chemical fires will produce. But butadiene, I think, for the most part, in those chemicals they're, that they're dealing with there are pretty much odorless. Yeah, I smell absolutely nothing, Dan. Uh, the only thing I can say is all three of us out here, our photographer, Derek, Angel, and I, have all said that, you know, we're kind of sniffly, our noses are running. But, I mean, that could just be... Yeah normal allergies. Uh, it's hard to say, but you know, I wasn't feeling like this uh, when I woke up this morning, right, but right. At the longer I've been out here, you know, it's kind of uh, sniffly and, right. and stuff like that. But we haven't felt any symptoms of, of the, you know, acute exposure that I can say we aren't smelling right. anything. Right. Um, but one thing that we've noticed in the past half hour is that black smoke. We right. couldn't see it earlier, but now you can tell how black it is, how thick it is, and uh, the direction that it's going. So 
that's only going to become more apparent as the sun comes up this morning here in an hour or so. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I think that uh, some people may be surprised, like you say, just how thick it is and how big of a plume it is that's coming off of that fire that's burning there. Kelsey, thank you for your work. We appreciate it. And again, be careful out there. It is uh, seven away from the top of the hour. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back on the other side again. We're going to continue to pull in all the resources that